If you were watching the last video, you'll remember that I put together a really simple scrolling demo, and here it is running on the screen. The idea being that we actually take two copies of a map file, or of a map section, sorry, and we make them run past each other, offset by the width of the screen, and this gives us a really simple effect. Something like this can look quite good in a simple game. But actually, there's a technique you can use called parallax scrolling, which does very small tweaks to the code, but can give quite a good impression of things moving at different distances from the player. So if I remind you just very quickly about how things have gone on, we've got a simple ver variable here called map x, and that changes until it gets all the way over to the left-hand side of the screen at minus 127, at which point it's reset to naught. And I draw two copies of that map, the first at map x and the second shifted by 128 pixels, i.e. the width of the screen. So that's where we're up to so far, and if you remember I drew some graphics to give me a really realistic looking screen, and I drew them onto the map, and everything looks lovely. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put a mountain in the background. So how am I going to draw a mountain? Well, you could draw a massive mountain using the sprite editor. You could zoom out and you could try and draw some sort of enormous mountain like that. But actually that's a bit silly. It's easier to build a mountain from a few small building blocks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build up a mountain using the sprite editor. Here we go. I'm going to take a slope. I'm going to paste it in and flip it. OK. I'm going to take both of these. And I'm going to paste them there and paste them there. And these ones are going to be pale mountains. And these are going to be beautiful snow-covered peaks. OK. And then underneath, I need a solid gray, a solid light gray, and a solid white. So I put together three um, shapes like this, and this is going to be enough for me to build all sorts of mountains. So for my first background, I've got to make sure that they're fairly dark. If, you, if you've ever looked at um, artwork and things like this, you know that as things go further and further away into the distance, they get paler and paler and paler. So my first group of mountains are going to be fairly dark gray, this, this color here maybe with a snow-capped peak, because who doesn't love a snow-capped peak? So here's my map editor, and as you remember, if I zoom out, my first map has taken this space here. So I'm going to draw my next map next to it. Now the key to this is to remember that this location here is the ground level. Okay, So I'm going to start, not like that, I'm going to start drawing a mountain like this. OK, and then I'm going to come down the other side. So there's a mountain, and I'm going to draw along the base here and fill that in. OK, and as I promised you, a snow-capped peak. There is a snow-capped peak on my mountain. OK, and um, I might actually also, because again, if I look, there's the size of the... Um, window. These dots here represent the size of the window. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit here. Sorry, let's just put that one back in place there. Okay. Um, and I'm going to come down here like this. And I'm going to put a second mountain in the background. And maybe this one will also have, whoops, missed out there, a little bit of snow on it. So there is my first background mountain. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll across and I'm going to put another mountain further back. And this other mountain is going to be really big. It's going to be big, but it's going to be far away. And because it's far away, it's going to be paler in colour. For any of you who have watched the, the great Father Ted, it's very difficult to say both further away and small without thinking of Father Ted trying to explain all of this to Father Dougal Maguire. Right, so this is far away. It's big, but far away. I'll go up one more on the mountain. The reason I'm faffing around like this is I'm trying to get it so that it comes back down to the ground. There. Okay, and I will just fill in this part with the bits. I've made a bit of a hash of some of these bits. Undo that. So I'm going to fill in, fill in, fill in. So I have got a grey mountain here. I've got darker grey mountains here. And I've got my background there. 
Now the key to remember is that this location here is 0, 0. Okay? This location is 16 across. All right, so this one up here is not going to be at 0, 0. It's going to be shuffled across a little bit more. All right, and this one's at 16, 0. And if I come over to this one, this one's at 32, 0. Okay, you can see it down at the bottom left of the screen. So that's really important because I've got to make sure I grab the correct map before I do anything else. So coming back to here, I've got a map X. Okay, I'm going to need a few others as well. Actually, I'm going to need to declare a few more. So I'm going to have for the foreground, I'll call it hill X. And that's also going to be set to naught. And I'm going to have mountain X for the final background. Now you could call them anything you want. These are effectively your three layers. The other thing now that's different is that these have got to move at different speeds. The way that parallax scrolling works is that things that are close to you move quickly and things that are further back move more slowly. So the map speed, I'm going to make one. All right, so map speed equals one. The hill speed, which is just a bit further away, is going to equal 0.5. And the mountain speed, which is a long way away, is going to equal 0 0.25. Okay, now you can faff with these values, that's absolutely fine. Now you can see here in our function update that at the moment map x subtracts 1 every turn. Now I've got to make sure it actually subtracts, subtracts the map speed. Okay, and that's going to do that for this. And you can see what's going to happen. I'm going to have two more of these. I'm going to have, if I paste them in, one that will be dealing with the hill. So it's going to be hill x equals hill speed and down there hill and we reset hill okay and this one is going to be mountain mountain speed is subtracted from the mountain x there and if mountain x is less than 127 we reset mountain x to zero and obviously it comes as no surprise to realize that in the draw function we have to do the same thing so after i've drawn the map I've got to make sure I draw things in the correct order. So I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to draw the furthest thing away first, which is the mountain. Then in front of the mountain, I'm going to have the hill. OK. And then finally, in front of the hill, I'm going to have the map. So this is very important. I need to make sure I get these things drawn in the right order. The other thing to remember, as I've said, is that the hill map starts at 16 naught there, and the mountain map starts at 32 0 so the mountain one i am choosing the map from 32 0 and the hill one i'm choosing the map from 16 0. so i've got my three layers now map hill mountain three speeds map hill mountain and the important thing is they get slower as they get further away in all of them i just change the values and then i draw them mountain because it's furthest away then hill then the map OK, so let's see what we get when we actually run this thing. Well, there we have it. Some scrolling mountains with some various backgrounds. You can see very much in the background the grey peaks, which are obviously a long way away because they're moving very slowly. We've got the snow-crapped um, mountains just in front of us. And they're moving a little bit more um, swiftly. And then finally, we've got the really nice um, realistic mud and grass background, and that's moving relatively rapidly. And obviously you can imagine, just for completeness here, if I was to draw a um, character, so here is my um, computer player, okay, sitting here like this with, um, an, um, yeah, an orange top and some snazzy purple trousers, all right, so there we go, and those eyes are slightly mistaken. There we go. So there's our character. Okay, it's not a particularly exciting character. Sprite number 10, just need to remember that. Then in the draw function, I am going to put my sprite 10 in place. So I'm going to make sure I put sprite 10. What location? Well, the map top, if I scroll across here, if I wanted the sprite to be located, if I zoom in, I want the sprite here. So if I look down here, I can see the coordinates. I like that location, 3, 9. Remember, 3 tiles in, 9 tiles down. That's really important. Don't put it at 3, 9 or it'll float in the top of your screen. So it's 3 times 8, which is going to be at 24. And 9 times 8, 
which is 72. So I shall put that there. And if I run and if I run that, there's my character sitting at the bottom. You could combine this with a bit of animation. It's quite clear this character is running through the landscape. Okay. Whereas in reality, of course, we know nothing of the kind is happening. That sprite is being drawn at a constant fixed location. Okay. But very quickly, you can see how this starts to become a pretty easy to code sideways platform game. All right. Happy programming.